Thank you all for joining today and welcome to the Google session behind the scene launching Google Open Source Live. It looks like we have 37 curious people who are brave enough to spend time with us. So thank you all, I appreciate it. My name is Teresa Terasaki. I'm originally from Japan and moved to San Francisco a year ago. When I lived in Tokyo, my nickname was Miss Yelp. People came to me for restaurant recommendations every day. I haven't established a nickname yet here in San Francisco, but I do love exploring new restaurants. My favorite place so far have been Flower and Water in the Mission for their pasta tasting menu and Kusakabe in the financial district, district for the omakase sushi. When I'm not exploring the strength, I'm a program manager at the open source program office leading brand experience and events. Before I begin, I would love to know about you. Please tell us about yourself in the chat. Where are you joining us from? If you have a favorite restaurant anywhere in the world, please share with us in the chat also. I will give you a second. I will see how many people respond. Hello from the UK. Hi, Richard. Awesome. It must be evening in the UK. Okay. Do you want uh, Brussels? Wow. Oh, nice. Roni from Belgium. Wow. A lot of European folks in here today. Ashok from North Carolina. And Chris from NC. Is it New York? NC. Uh, oh, sorry. North Carolina. North Carolina. Lodger, North Carolina. Oh, wow. Lots of folks from North Carolina. Um, William uh, from North Carolina. Wow. Okay. What's going on in North Carolina? I'm very curious. Um, Indiana. Newman. Awesome. Um, great. Um, thank you for sharing. Um, oh, ADO is held in North Carolina. Oh, okay. Oh, great. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, uh, great. Um, I can't wait to travel to North Carolina. Um, okay, um, let's get started. Thank you everyone for introducing yourself. So why we are here today? Why does Google love open source so much? Google has released over 2,600 open source projects so far. Now, here is a question for you. Do you recognize any of the icons here? Those are examples of our open source projects. If you know any of the project names, please go ahead and write into chat. TensorFlow Loni, yeah, that's correct. Android, Kubernetes, Angular. Oh, wow, Ashok, you're nailing it. <laughs> Not many people can answer Angular. Uh, Docker, oh, Docker, not Docker. <laughs> Sailpoint, Sailpoint, oh no. <laughs> um, close, Kubernetes, yes. Android, Kubernetes, Flutter, TensorFlow, Go, Angular, wow. Neoman, you are nailing it. Richard, Go, yes, right. Ashok, Flutter, Knative, Alec, yeah. Um, I think you guys um, <laughs> are all collect. Um, that's great to hear. Thank you for answering. Um, so yeah, here are the answers. Android is a smartphone opening uh, operating system, which most of the people already figured out. Kubernetes is a container orchestration. Flutter is an UI software development kit for apps. Firebase is a UI software development kit for apps. And sorry, Firebase is an app development platform. And TensorFlow is a number one machine learning repository on GitHub. And Go is a software development language. Istio, oh, I don't think nobody got Istio. Istio is a service mesh and Knative manages serverless workloads. 
Apache Beam executes data processing pipelines, and Angular is a web application framework. I hope you are not as confused as I am by now, but to support these contrast projects within Google, Christy Bona founded the open source program office in 2004. He will be speaking at the keynote tomorrow morning, so you can hear more about it there. Over the 16 year history of OSPO, this year may well have been the most dramatic. What am I talking about? If you live in the Bay Area, March 17th was the day that the shelter in place order was issued for all of the residents, including the entire city of San Francisco. Like the rest of the country, I rushed to the grocery store to stock up on canned food and toilet paper. But of course, the shelter in place affected more than just our grocery shopping. Open source projects were also impacted as productivity went way down. For example, we saw a 38% drop in daily cord committers for Kubernetes projects. And as you can see, other workloads dropped as well. On the other side, corporations are planning to increase investment in open source. According to the open source program survey conducted in May this year, more than 1,000 people in the variety size of companies said that their organizations are creating more open source projects than ever before. The demand is high, but the community is struggling. So we asked ourselves, what can we do for open source community? To understand what the community is looking for, we took a survey at industry events. We learned that virtual events were the most popular channel for them to stay up to date on open source projects. Oh, it looks like Robert can't hear me talking. Um, Flyan, do you think you can fix that? Um, so we decided to make one. We had to launch something quickly. So we looked inside of Google to find existing resources we could use immediately. We have experts across the company who are working on open source projects. We also have ready to use virtual platforms, YouTube live stream and Google Meet. So we decided to combine those three and create the virtual community hub. This is what we launched. Please welcome Google Open Source Live. Google Open Source Live is a monthly live event series where the open source community can get together and learn from open source experts. Each event includes four sessions and the live Q&A. We finish with an after party on Google Meet. It's an opportunity to connect with the speakers and other attendees. There are three benefits the community can get from this Google Open Source Live. Community can hear latest update on the project from the Google experts, new release, tips, case study, and so on. Community also have an opportunity to ask questions directly to speakers and solve issues on their projects. Lastly, community can engage with experts and other community members in the library environment and share experience together. When we launched the community hub, we wanted to focus on three key values, real time, interactive and accessible. Dear time, to liven things up and engage the audience, we always have a live MC throughout the entire event. There is no going back, no playback function until the event ends. So this will help create an engaged and focused audience. Interactive is an important element for us. We have a live Q&A forum below the live stream window so that the audience can ask questions during the presentation. At the end, we conclude the event with an after party with a DJ, cartoon artist, 
polls and quizzes. Accessible. All the sessions have captioning and we pay extra attention to the screen layout to make sure it's designed for easy viewing for any audience. We also created guidelines for virtual event accessibility, which we will release on our blog soon. Because this event is online, there are no geographical restrictions. Anyone can join from anywhere in the world, like this event. We also set the event time at 9 a.m. Pacific, so that the majority of our EMEA audience and some in APAC can join live. Over the two events we have hosted so far, we had attendees from more than 50 countries, and we were thrilled when they, their audience satisfaction survey gave us 4.6 out of 5 for our first event. The live Q&A forum was one of the most popular activities. We saw over 200 live Q&A interactions throughout both events. During and after the events, we saw lots of attendees sharing their experience on Twitter and Slack. We saw positive comments, especially around the event interactive components. We are so happy to see the action from community. We have hosted two events so far, the new Open Source and Knative Day. We have two more to go this year, Go Day on November 5th and Kubernetes Day on December 3rd. The 2021 event calendar is already booked out through August. We will kick off the year with Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Day, followed by Basil, Beam, Spark, and so on. So I have another question for you. You all are experiencing virtual events this year. If you could choose, how would you want to attend All Things Open next year? In person or virtual? Please add your preference in the chat. Sergio, in person? Yeah. In person, two votes for in person. Virtual, hybrid, yeah. Virtual, okay, in person. So we have four in person, two virtual combination. Virtual, but only because I'm in the UK, yeah. That's, yeah, I feel you, Richard. Um, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six. Six in person, or oh, seven in person so far. And one, two, three, four, four virtual. And three hybrid. Hybrid to be more inclusive. I would attend in person, but would like to log into the busy session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, it looks like in person one this time. When we took a community survey at Cubicon EU this August, 62% of respondents said they would still prefer to attend in-person events next year. Why people prefer in-person events? First, I would love to hear what you think. Um, if you prefer to attend the in-person events, why? Um, what do you miss about in-person events? So here's the last question for you. Tell us what you think in the chat. Networking, Sergio. Yeah, me too. Um, much easier to network and actually talk to people, Alec. Yeah, I agree. Meeting new people, Daniel. Yeah, I miss meeting new people. Although we are communicating through chat, I can't see your face. Um, so it's, it's sad. Um, yeah, it looks like everyone is um, keen to do networking, meeting new people. That sounds about what we expected. Um, when we took a community survey, we saw three main themes people miss about in-person events. The first theme is interaction. Networking is more efficient. Hallway talk is organic and you can have spontaneous conversations. 
For some people, all their team members are remote, so events are the only opportunity for them to meet in person. The second theme is experience. You can feel energy, emotion, and excitement. It's an unforgettable experience, and in-person memories last longer than virtual events. You can also explore a new country or a city. And of course, there is a free food, drinks, swag, and after party. The third theme is practic uh, practicality. You can interact with experts and get help on projects. Also, it's easy to focus on the event if you are attending in person. As you can see, there are many elements we can't achieve with a virtual event format. But we are continuously exploring how to develop our Google Open Source Live so that community members can get the most benefit. If you are interested in, please join us at the upcoming events and share it with your friends and coworkers. I would love to see you all there. The URL is opensourcelive.withgoogle.com. Google.com. I'll show with you in the chat so you can copy. And also after attending the event, please share your experience with hashtag Google OS Live. We would like to know what you think. With that, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you all for listening. And now we will open up for questions. Excellent, Teresa. Yeah. And uh, participants, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to post them in the Q&A or the, the chat stream. Not seeing any yet. I, I've got one for you, Teresa. Have, have, have you ever had so many um, attendees that it, it kind of challenged the uh, the bandwidth or the, the Google Cloud to be able to handle uh, that many people? Or is it is it pretty robust enough where it can handle? Yeah, it's actually robust. So uh, we don't have any bandwidth issues so far. We are using YouTube uh, live stream and our back end. So oh, cool. we can have like 10,000 people. Wow. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, so far um, it was good. No. <laughs> and the the uh, to to sign up. I mean, is there is there kind of a time when people would have to sign up by, like a uh, you know a week before, a month before? Is there is there any kind of deadlines to sign up by? Yeah, so we normally open up the registration two months in advance and um, you can sign up anytime. Um, and if you sign up before, right before the event start, then you can watch that in live stream. And if you sign up later after the event they pass, then you can watch the VOD video on demand. So recordings. Oh, okay. right? You can't experience a live um, kind of atmosphere. We have a live MC and we have after party. So that's the benefit for live attendees. So ah. only who uh, were, who are uh, on time at the moment can join and get the benefit. So we have a cartoon artist and they draw the face paintings um, for the attendees like face. Um, so which, which was very uh, big hit and that's, that's a cool. party. Uh, those kind of benefit and only live attendees only. Nice, nice. Um, oh, it looks like, yeah, Ed has a question. I'm an insider, but I'd love to, Teresa, to share a bit more about after party idea. What have you done to make people want to turn up and, and structure time when the talks are done? How to differentiate against other webinar dates? Yeah, I, I just um, talk about the cartoon artists, but we try to bring in the live atmosphere and try to bring in attendees. Like what I have been doing that I kept asking a question to the audience during my presentation. Uh, chat is the only way um, to do that and this event platform, but sometimes we will unmute attendees and I invite them and introduce them um, in front of everyone. So we can kind of have a community environment and atmosphere. It's a very friendly um, atmosphere. So um, people like that. 
Um, yeah, thank you for the question that. <laughs>